This installment of Exploring Rhetorical Devices is brought to you by Nomad Surfboards. Totally rad. Nomad. And a very special shout out to William in the advanced class who persuaded somebody to spend the rest of her life with him. Congrats, William. And I know, having seen several of William's speeches, that his vows are going to be totally killer in the sweetest way possible. It's a beautiful thing to see people transition from one stage of life to the next. Those transitions work best when they are smooth and logical. If your main points do not flow naturally from one point to the next, your audience can feel it. You know this. You've been there. And there's actually a very simple shift in perspective that will help make sure that your transitions work in every speech presentation or lecture that you give. All we're going to do is take that basic framework of my next point is and adjust that to say, and that brings me to my next point. So what is the difference? Transition. One is abrupt and doesn't have to be logical. The other is clear and must depend on the point that came before. So what does this look like? We can take a look at a silly example like, you should learn to play the guitar. You should learn to play the guitar because it will improve your fine motor skills and get you more dates. So let's take a look at the history of guitar playing. Why? Guitar playing will improve your fine motor skills. It will get you more dates. And my next point, is the history. Why? You will get more dates as a guitar player. How do we know this is true? All we have to do is take a look at the history. So in that first example, the history just appears out of nowhere. In the second one, there's a clear tie-in, connection, transition from point one to point two, from getting more dates to the history. Just going back six or seven decades to the advent of rock and roll and the electric guitar, we can clearly see that guitar players on average get about four to five thousand percent more dates than your typical bassoon player. Dorothy is from Kansas. She lives on a farm with her dog. And then Dorothy was in Oz. How'd she get there? We need the tornado. That transition from one place to the next. Your speeches are no different. Get us from point A to point B, from Kansas to Oz and back, somehow. Lastly, there is a rhetorical device called metabasis that you can use as a transition between points. And it's simply a way of summarizing your previous point and pointing to the next one. So much for last year's numbers, let's look at this year's. So much for the problem, let's take a look at the solution. But life isn't all terrible. Let's look at some of the awesomeness. Brief summary of what I've covered, directing us to the future to the next point. I've included a list of transition words you could take a look at in the description here. The exact wording here is not important. What is important is the mindset, that I'm not going from this place to the next without a clear tie-in or transition. And what reminds me of that is, and that brings me to this. I'm being brought here, somehow, some way. How do I get there? My magic, you have to take my hand and bring me to that next point. If you do this, your audience is more likely to be able to follow along, remember what you say, and take action on it. Not only that, but you'll be more likely to remember what it is you have to say. Just like a movie you've seen a hundred times, you could tell me in what order things happen. If you structure your speeches in the same way that allows one point to naturally follow the next, with a clear tie-in and transition, it will be much more obvious to you how that speech should flow. You can think of your entire presentation in this way, as a journey from one point to the next to the next. Not simply appearing somewhere. I've got to get there somehow. So take me on that journey.